Hello friends, this is Limitless Life. I am your host, Larry Hutton, and we get into some good news on this program. We are gonna share things that are gonna help set you free physically. In fact, if you stay with us, we'll, we'll, we'll help you get free financially. We'll help you get free emotionally. Why? Because we teach things out of the Word of God that Jesus came to the earth from the Father God so that you could have a better life. He, he knew uh, after the fall, if you, if you read the Bible and the fall of man, when uh, Adam and Eve fell in the garden to Satan's temptations and sin entered into humanity, sin brought all kinds of curses into man's life. Physical curses, financial curses, emotional curses, mental curses, uh, marital curses, social curses, all kinds of curses. But when Jesus came, he made this statement. He said, I've come that you might have life. And that life that he was referring to is the life of God. That you, he, you, you could say it this way. I came so that you could have the same life that God has. Why? Because if you go back to the beginning in Genesis 1:26, um, God created man in his image and his likeness. So God wants you and me to be like him and live like him and enjoy life like him and be happy like him and full of joy and full of health and no limits on us financially and just one blessing after another. So that's what we're all about. We, we always share things on this program that are relevant to our life today. And I'll tell you what, your health is relevant to your life today. Your money is relevant to your life today. Your emotions and your feelings are relevant to your life today. Uh, all the different things that we cover on this program, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, maritally, all the different things, uh, they, all, they all, to, all have to do with you and I living better. I mean, and everybody I meet, even, even really bad people, they're, I mean, maybe they've learned a way of the world to try and get stuff and have financial freedom, but everybody, regardless of how good or bad they are, everybody wants better. You know, they want to feel better. They want to uh, be financially better, uh, emotionally better. I mean, everybody wants to be better in their lives. So <clears throat> that's what we're all about. And so we're going to get back in. We're actually doing a series. This is the ninth program of our series that we started. And if you've missed it, we are talking about God wants you healthy. A lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. I, the first 22 years of my life, I had an incurable disease in my body. I didn't know God wanted me healed. And, and when I went to church, I was told God didn't want me healed. And so I, I heard a lot of things from a lot of people and it kept me sick. And then I finally went to a church and I heard that Jesus is the same today that he's the only true and living God. It's not, a, um, it's not a religion. It's a relationship with Jesus that'll get you saved from sin. It'll get you healed in your body. It'll get you financially free. It'll get you emotionally free in just every area of your life. And so we started this series about God wants you healthy because health in the physical body is so, I mean, apropos, if you will, it's so, it's so vital in our lives that we have health in our bodies if we... If we want to have a happy life and a fulfilled and a content life, when people are sick, when people are diseased, when people are in physical pain, when people have been injured or wounded, those things take away from life. It's not the kind of life that God wants us to live. And so I don't know how you were raised, if you were raised like me, being told that it's not God's will for everybody. You know, you just have to pray if it be thy will. And if God doesn't do it, you have to just accept it. Uh, if you were raised like me, maybe you were told God sometimes allows these things because it's your cross to bear or, or God's put this into your life or allowed this in your life because you're special or, or maybe it's to humble you because you're too full of pride or you know, just one reason after another. Those things kept me sick. And uh, I'm so glad I started hearing the truth because truth got me healed. I, I threw all my medication away after being uh, sick for the first 22 years of my life, threw all the medication away, haven't had a drop since. So I, I know how to walk in health. I know how when sickness comes, 
because it's going to come against everybody, which is one reason we're doing this series. So even if you're watching and you don't need healing right now, at some point you will. <laughs> I don't care who you are. At some point you'll have some pains come against your body, some tumors, uh, some growth, some some uh, viruses, some bacteria, some sickness, some different. You're going to have things come against you. Uh, so whether you're going to or whether you are right now, God wants you healthy. And that's why we're teaching this. So you can not only learn how to get healed, but then how to walk in health when sickness tries to attack you. All right. So we, we were, we've been in Romans and we're going to stay there again. We're going to go back to Romans chapter 10. Because verse 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the name of the Lord is not just Savior. The name of the Lord is also Jehovah Rapha, our healer. So we found out that you can call on that name and be saved from sickness, just like you can call on the name Savior and be saved from sin. <laughs> I like that. And you can call on the name Jesus, your peace. Remember, uh, we're told in Ephesians that Jesus is our peace. So bless God, that's one of his names. He can, I can call on him as my peace and I can walk in peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, my peace I leave to you. Don't let your heart be troubled, don't let it be afraid. So you can actually use Jesus as your peace to overcome fear, panic attacks, depression, oppression, anger, bad temper, discouragement, guilt, shame. I mean, all the things that can rule you emotionally, you can rule them with Jesus as your peace because you can call on him. But one thing that we've been studying is Jesus is our healer. And we found out this word saved is the Greek word sozo and means healed, just like it means saved. So we can call on Jesus as healer, just like we can call on Jesus as savior. So you look at this verse, whoever calls on Jesus uh, shall be saved. Well, whoever calls on Jesus shall be healed. But you have to call on him as healer in order to get healed. So let's do what we've been doing each verse, because each um, program, because it helps and refreshes you and renews you. Verse 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord as healer, since that's one of his names, shall be saved or shall be healed, right? But let's go on in verse 14. How can they call on him as healer in whom they've not believed that Jesus is the healer? A lot of people don't. Well, how can they believe in him as healer? in whom they've not heard that Jesus is the healer. And the end of verse 14, how can they hear Jesus is the healer without a preacher telling them Jesus is the healer? Verse 17, so then faith for healing or faith for health or faith for a physical miracle comes by hearing and hearing the word of God on healing or Jesus the healer, a miracle worker. All right. Now, we took the verses backwards, and you find out backwards is actually the forward progression. What do you mean, Brother Larry? Well, if you haven't been with me, hang with me. You haven't been in the previous programs. Watch this. Verse 17 backwards. When we hear the word of God on healing, faith for healing comes. Just like when you hear the word of God on salvation, faith to receive Jesus the heal uh, sa Savior comes. Well, when you hear the word of God on healing, faith to receive Jesus the healer comes. Verse 14 backwards, when a preacher preaches about Jesus the healer, we hear Jesus is the healer. Once we hear, look at verse 14 backwards, once we hear Jesus is the healer, we can believe Jesus is healer. Once we believe Jesus is healer, we can call on Jesus as healer. Now look at verse 13, and whoever calls on Jesus as healer shall be, not might be, shall be healed. Now, I was describing in the previous programs, like the, the reason why a lot of people don't get healed is because they were in the church that I was raised in. The, in the church that I was raised in, uh, verse 14 backwards, a preacher did not preach about Jesus the healer did not preach that it was God's will to heal everybody. So, verse 14 backwards, if a preacher does not preach it's God's will to heal all and preach about Jesus the healer, number one, you don't hear Jesus as healer and it's God's will to heal you. And verse 14 backwards, if you don't hear 
Jesus is the healer and it's God's will to heal you. You cannot believe Jesus is the healer and that it's God's will to heal you. And if you don't believe Jesus is the healer and that it's God's will to heal you, then you will not call on Jesus as healer and believe that he's healed you. And if you don't call, verse 14 or verse 13, whoever calls is the one that gets. So if you don't call, you don't get. So I realized the church that I was raised in, the reason I was never healed in that church and the reason that other people were never healed in that church is because the preacher never preached about Jesus the healer and never preached that it was God's will to heal all. So if the preacher doesn't preach it, verse 14 backwards, we don't hear it. If we don't hear it, we cannot believe it. And it, wasn't, it wasn't that God wanted the people sick. God wanted a preacher or somebody to preach it, but if nobody preaches it, you cannot hear it. And if you can't hear it, verse 14 backwards, you cannot believe it. And if you don't believe it, you're not going to call. And if you don't call, you're not going to get. So I never called. All I could do was pray when I was part of that church. All I could do is pray, Lord, you know, I've heard it's not your will to heal everybody. So all I can do is pray, Lord, if it's your will, heal me. I never called knowing that I would get. Why? Because I didn't believe it. Why didn't I believe it? Because I didn't hear it. Why didn't I hear it? Because it was never preached. Wow. You know, I thank God today because back when I was raised, you know, there wasn't the Internet. And when I was uh, sick with an incurable disease, you know, I couldn't hear all these different preachers on TV and stuff. There were a couple. Um, had I gone to a course, even back then, there weren't many Christian bookstores, but had I gone and maybe there would have been a few books on somebody that had believed it was God's will to heal. But most of the books I read, uh, well, you know, God caused this disease on me and God caused this accident and it was God that did it. And, and I remember when my sister, my sister died at 19 years of age of disease. And I remember them saying, well, you know, God had a purpose in this. So in other words, they were saying, God made your sister sick and and he has a purpose that you can't understand, so you're just going to have to not lean to your own understanding because the Bible says that. But see, because the people wouldn't preach truth about Jesus the healer, like we've talked about all the previous eight programs, uh, if I'd have heard what you've heard, if you've been with us the last eight programs, this is the ninth program now, if, you'd, if I'd have heard what you've been hearing, I would have believed Jesus is the healer today, just like when he physically walked the earth. I would have believed what I heard. Remember the last, um, the last um, program we were talking about those 19 cases. I actually went through the Bible and, and studied out all 19 cases. There were, there's only 19 stories in the four Gospels of individuals that came to Jesus. I'm not talking about when it says the multitudes or when it talked about the two blind men that came. I'm talking about individuals that came to Jesus for healing. There's only 19 recorded. And out of the 19 cases, all of them got healed. All of them, it was God's will to heal. None of them did Jesus turn away or say it wasn't God's time or, or it's not God's will for you. And the majority of them got healed on their own faith. Jesus said, as you have believed, so be it done. According to your faith, so be it done. Wow. And that was... That was hand selected by God, those 19 cases, and put in the scripture, all scripture given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction and correction. So, wow, these 19 cases are letting me know the will of God. If Jesus didn't turn anybody away, if Jesus didn't leave any of them sick, if Jesus didn't want them sick, if Jesus didn't make them sick, and he only did what he saw the Father do, then bless God, now I know what God's will is for my life. If I'd have known that, I'd have believed it. But see, that church I was raised in, they didn't do the three things this verse talks about here. This verse talks about hear, believe, call. The three things we have to do in every area, whether it's to be saved Spiritually, whether it's to be saved physically, whether it's to be saved financially. In other words, the word sozo, saved, delivered, preserved, protected, healed, made whole. So whether you're getting delivered from uh, something that's got you bound, whether you're getting healed, whether you're getting made whole, whether you're getting saved from sin, whatever. 
we have to hear, then we have to believe, and then we have to call. And friends, it is important what you hear. And you can see that by these verses. He said, what you hear is going to help establish your belief system. And then once you get your belief system established, it'll establish your mouth system. <laughs> Call, speak, right? Utter. Confession. Confession is made unto salvation. The previous verses right before this that we're looking at here. So uh, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We, we see this word saved is saved not just from sin, but healed of sickness, delivered from bondages, made whole of injuries and wounds. All of that's part of salvation. So we've got to be careful what we hear. That means from the pulpit. That's, that was one reason I had to change churches. It's not that the pastor is bad. It's not that the church is bad. But if they don't know the truth, they're not going to preach it. If they don't preach it, they may be preaching the truth in one area. Maybe they preach about salvation from sin. And maybe that's all they know. But if they don't preach that it's God's will to heal you, that it's God's will for all, you're not going to hear it. If you don't hear it, you're not going to believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to call. And if you don't call, you're not going to get. So what we hear, let's talk about this hearing part because this is vital. We'll talk about all three of these, this process here. We got to hear first, then we got to believe, then we got to call. We'll talk about all three of those so that you get the understanding of how you can do this anywhere at any time for anything and you can be healed in your body or you can walk in health or you can resist sickness and disease when it does attack your body and get rid of it. You don't have to allow it to stay. So it is important what we hear. It's important what we hear from the pulpit. So like I said, that's why I had to change churches. I finally realized, you know what? I got to get over here to a church that's preaching it's God's will for me to be healed. And then I found out I needed to hear that it's God's will for me to prosper financially. It's God's will for me to live in His peace and His joy. In other words, be mentally stable, emotionally stable. Don't allow my hormones, my, the chemicals in my body or any, or any one any, any action to change the way I feel, I can feel peace and I can feel joy and I can use God's self-control to feel peace and feel joy all the days of my life, regardless of what's happened. I don't have to let, let things or other people control my feelings. So all those things, I needed to hear that. So I had to change churches. Why? Because it's important what you hear. It's important what you hear. In fact, it's important what you hear from your Christian friends. Because Christian friends can mean well, but they can sit there and tell you, you know, I, I've, I get on the Internet and read things and see things in, on social media sites and people say things that are not scriptural at all. And they're saying it to their friends and they mean well, they're trying to help them. But in fact, they're hurting them because they're keeping them in doubt and unbelief instead of believing God. So I'd, I'd much rather surround myself with Christian friends that are going to preach the truth. I'm not saying I won't hang around the others, but I'm saying that my inner circle, the ones that I hang around the most, I want them to be full of faith. I want them to be full of the Word of God. I want them to be full of Jesus. <laughs> They're going to put Jesus first. And if they or me, we find out that we're believing something wrong because now we see in the Bible God says this, then we're going to quit what we be believe and we're going to start believing truth. Amen. So, man... You got to you got to get in a good church that's preaching. God wants you healthy. He wants you wealthy. He wants you wise. He wants you full of peace, full of joy. He wants you uh, ruling life, reigning in life. He wants you being an overcomer, living as more than a conqueror, getting victory after victory in your life. He doesn't want you living on emotional roller coaster. He wants you up all the time and living the dream life and full of peace and being happy and content in life. And you can do that when you're going through storms, friends. You can do that when you understand scripture. You can do that when you're going through storms. So we have to be careful what we hear from the pulpit. We've got to be careful what we hear from other Christians. What about television? Television bombards us all the time. Well, you know, if you got this feeling, symptom in your body, then take this. 
Well, if this is going on in your body and you feel dizzy or you feel pain in your joints or you feel this tumor or you feel a growth or you feel dizzy or you feel, I mean, just one thing after another, they say, take this and take that and take this and take that. And man, the other day I was watching TV and they came up with the thing and they said, now, if you're feeling this way, you need such and such a drug. And this drug will stop you from feeling that way anymore. You will actually not, that will alleviate that symptom and that feeling. Now, you're going to have to be careful when you take this medicine because it can cause you to have this and it can cause you to uh, uh, have this and it can cause you to uh, uh, almost die and then it can cause you to die. And, and so if this symptom and this symptom and this, and, and by the time they got done, the symptoms that they were listing and even death were worse than the symptom that the drug was supposed to be getting rid of. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? They're, 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 they're meaning well, I guess, but, but yet they're not helping us. What's helping us is when we go to the Word of God and we hear what God says. Hmm, hear what God says. So be careful what you hear. That means you've got to be careful listening on television because even listening on television can get you in fear. Well, now the doctor says if, if your parents had this and you're listening to this medical scientific report on TV, if your parents had this or your grandparents or your great-grandparents, then that means you have this gene and the genetic possibility of you having this problem. And all of a sudden, when you have the symptoms, the devil's going to jump on your shoulder and whisper in your ear, yep, yep, you heard it. Remember remember when you heard it on television? What's the devil trying to do? Get us to believe what we heard on TV rather than believe what God said. And then the devil even, even quotes scripture that you don't understand. I've talked about that already. But the devil trying to use scripture to get you not to believe other scripture. Yeah, you can believe, okay, whoever calls on the name of Jesus says healer shall be healed. You can believe this scripture, but then he'll try and get you. Well, now, you know, you tried that and it didn't work. And so the reason it didn't work, you remember Job and you remember Paul's thorn and you remember Epaphroditus was sick and you remember Trophimus left at Miletus sick and, and you remember uh, Timothy with that often infirmity and remember and you remember and he tries to get you to dwell on something you don't understand to try and get you not to believe something you do understand where God told me years ago if you'll just focus your faith, faith focus your attention on scriptures that you do know they'll work for you and the scriptures you don't know what do we do he told me just kind of put them on the shelf you know what I mean by that in other words you don't want to just ignore the scripture but you just say Lord I don't understand that one right now so right now I'm not going to let that hinder my faith. I do understand this. Jesus, one of his names is healer. I can call on him as healer. And so I am healed. I accept that, Lord Jesus. I understand that. So that's where I'm putting my faith. And then, Lord, give me wisdom about these other scriptures so I can understand them too. Then the devil won't be able to hinder your faith, right? Which is good news. So it's, it's not rocket science, friends. It's... Um, it's it's truth out of the word of God where we decide, you know what? Jesus said, thy word is truth. So I make the decision, um, God, you said this, so I'm going to believe it. I, I'm going to believe it, not because Brother Larry said it, not because somebody else said it, but because it's in the Bible. It said it's the word of God. See, once you establish your belief system, not on the wisdom of men, but on the wisdom of God, it'll work for you, see. And so we, we hear the word of God. And then when we're hearing things that aren't in line with the word of God, we choose to believe what the word says, regardless of what somebody else experiences. In fact, I'm going to talk about that next program because that I believe that's probably the number one hindrance to people being healed is, is they hear, well, you know, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, they tried that faith stuff. You know, they, they tried 
calling on Jesus as healer and they didn't get healed. And so, you know, if you do and it doesn't work, just understand God's got a higher purpose and, you know, and, and there's something that God's trying to do in your life and, 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 and you'll fall for that stuff. It's not, that's a doctrine of devil, friends. We've got to believe the word and not scripture taken out of context, which that's what the devil does. And, and he even gets preachers that don't understand what, what the Bible says. They'll, he'll even get scriptures to, or preachers to preach scriptures out of context and make you believe something that's not scriptural. So we always want to believe this is what the truth says. Jesus is my healer. I am calling on him. That's his name. His name isn't sick maker. I'm going to call on Jesus. He's going to make me sick. No, he's not going to make you sick. That's impossible. He will not do that. And I'll be proving that too. It's actually impossible for Jesus or God to make you sick. I'm going to prove that by the scripture. If you'll just stick with me, because you may have been taught using Old Testament scriptures and other scriptures, you may have been taught, well, God does that, but he doesn't. And if you just stick with me, we're going to keep going line upon line, precept upon precept, and you will get faith to be healed and you'll get faith to stay healed if you'll stick with me. All right. Well, we're out of time, but uh, let's get back into this uh, next time. And, and I want to share a story about something that happened overseas when I went that'll help you as well. But we're out of time. So thank you, partners. Thank you if you're a partner and you're, you're financially supporting this program. If you're not, you want to help us. We should could sure use your help. We want to reach more people and uh, tell people about our program to watch it. We can watch it and, uh, together and you'll be blessed. We're out of time. Bye-bye. When it comes to healing in your body, have you ever just lost hope? Do you ever secretly wonder if God really wants to heal you? Have your symptoms improved, but you've settled for less than complete healing? Have you ever doubted whether you even have any right to expect God's healing in the first place? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then Healing Made Easy is for you. In this powerful four lesson series, you will learn just how easy it is to be healed and to stay healed as Dr. Hutton cuts through the complexities and the religious red tape that sometimes obscure the simplicity of God's plan. Lessons include turning your hopes into faith, God's answer to if it be thy will, how to get great results, and healing is yours, come and take it. Just go to larryhutton.org to order the CD set or to purchase MP3 downloads, or you can call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.